happy sabbath good morning good evening from wherever you're watching us from we are glad that you are part of this worship this morning um thank you for joining us again today we are going to look at worshiping the creator lesson seven uh we've been going through this journey and we are thanking god for all for being with us all through uh before we do anything, I'll ask that today he just opens for us the word of prayer. Uh, thanks, Ramona. Let's, uh -huh. let's pray. Everlasting Father, creator of the universe, I thank you so much for the gift of salvation. I thank you that for the opportunity you've given us uh, uh, this panel, that, uh, that we may go through the lesson, worship the creator, that we may meditate upon the theme of you as our creator and as our redeemer. May these thoughts impress our uh, hearts more strongly as you use us as instruments in this panel this uh, day. I pray all this believing and trusting in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Zafed. I'll ask the rest of my team to just uh, introduce themselves, starting with you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Onsongo Rafael Nyamiso. Mm -hmm. I hope uh, we'll have an enlightening study. Karibu sana. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Praise God. My name is Jess Rono. I'm delighted to study with you today. Karibu sana. We are so delighted to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you. My name is uh, Jafet Rono. I am happy to be here. Karibu sana. So we are going to do what we always do every other Sabbath to just learn and study this lesson, Worshipping the Creator. Our memory text comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 4, verse 11. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. You know, it is so easy to take things for granted. Uh, for example, uh, we took church for granted for a long time until Corona showed up and we had to worship from home. Or even before that worshiping from home happened, I think uh, there was that no going to church, no going, no doing, no going to work, no going to school, no going to even just greeting people, shaking hands was banned. And for some time it was it wasn't easy. At first, we were in the hype, so we couldn't notice that all these privileges have been taken away. But as we progressed and progressed, then you haven't seen someone for like one month, two months. That's when we started uh, just being, just realizing that we have been taking all these things for granted. And it, it goes the same to our spiritual life. And that is what we are going to look at, worshiping the creator. And how have we taken that for granted? And how can we just move away from that and take God um, more serious than he, we take him perhaps? And worshiping and creation. So the central theme in the book of Revelation is just worship. And for us to worship, we have to know who we are worshiping and why are we worshiping him, you know? So we are going to delve a bit on creation and worship, and we are going to understand why we are worshiping God and who is really the creator, because there are other um, theories, I'd call them that, are things that we have learned in school, things that we keep teaching ourselves every other time about creation and who created the world? Yeah. So um, I'm we I'm going to start with ja with Jess on the Sunday part. You know, there is J uh, John the Revelator is in the island of Patmos, and there is always the question: Did he write the book of Revelation when he was there, or after he had come out of there? Because there is always that question. If you'd ask me. Uh, as a young child, I'll tell you he was there. But I've grown up, I'm, I don't know if he was there or not. But there's a whole... He, he was not there for something good. He was not on vacation, that is for sure. He was thrown there as a prisoner. So is it possible to have an, an angelic a, a vision while going through tribulations? Have you gone through tribulations and there and then met God like John? Maybe to tell us about that. Mm -hmm. um, I think the 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 story that comes to mind, or rather, my own experience that I've gone through, um, happened a few years back when I I was sort of, sort of in a dark place. Was praying um, mm -hmm. to God um, um, for something to happen, 
and it seemed that as though god was taking months and and i was um i was quite desperate mm. um hoping that god did listen and for a long time i felt that god had forsaken me for several months mm -hmm. and i remember one of those nights um uh, sitting in a in a in the in, actually i was lying on the bed um alone in the house it was very dark mm -hmm. um I was very low. I was crying. I was in I was crying the kind of the kind of tears as though someone has died. I was in serious grief mm -hmm. and it felt as though God had been silent in my life and I remember pleading with God and mm -hmm. saying, you know, if truly you exist um and you can see my trouble right now, mm -hmm. you know, reveal yourself. Mm -hmm. I'll, let me, let me see a bit of light in this darkness mm -hmm. that I mean because I had switched off the lights. Mm -hmm. And of course no no light was shone <laughs> and when i had made that prayer i believed i had be, i had prayed that prayer with all the faith that i had mm -hmm. in me and i believed god can do it but mm -hmm. he still didn't do it mm -hmm. and so when i made that prayer and he didn't do it i started wailing now believing that truly god has forsaken me mm -hmm. and i'm like you know god do anything mm -hmm. otherwise i'm going to lose all my hope that was not very long ago i think it was about six years ago mm -hmm. five, five 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 years ago and um uh i remember in while i'm wailing and crying thank god i'm alone in that house and it's very cold and dark mm -hmm. uh, i remember hearing a voice um calling behind me i had visibly about 2 a.m someone saying jacinta and i was it's like no one calls me jacinta i'm just you know <laughs> that's my full name mm -hmm. so i'm like okay that must be god or something has happened mm -hmm. and i remember praying i'm like god reveal yourself in mm -hmm. my trouble please i plead with you mm -hmm. and the thoughts of um christ being on the cross mm -hmm. um those last scenes mm -hmm. when he prayed and said my god my god why has thou forsaken mm -hmm. me came to my mind mm -hmm. at that point and i was like oh my goodness i'm going through the same experience christ went through mm -hmm. and i felt in my heart i was convinced that that was an impression from god mm -hmm. and i took up my bible very fast and the book desire of ages mm -hmm. and up to morning i read the desire of ages the last scenes of christ on the cross mm -hmm. and the last uh scenes as also described in the bible and for the first time in many months of tribulation mm -hmm. i was convinced that god was with me in amen, my trouble that amen, those verses amen. came back to me mm -hmm. at that point when i needed them mm -hmm. and i went i read through what christ went through and i realized christ was actually not alone mm -hmm. god was present yes. even though it seemed as though it the darkness had enveloped mm -hmm. him god who pavilions himself in darkness was with me in my tribulation mm -hmm. so like john um um in patmos mm -hmm. i do think god does reveal himself in our times of tribulation mm -hmm. and it is actually when we are almost at the very end of the rope we mm -hmm. see that even with daniel when daniel was extremely confused after months and years actually years of praying mm -hmm. that's when angel gabriel comes mm -hmm. um with john it is at the very end of the rope after he's even been boiled and his 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 he's at the almost at the last end of his trouble and he's now been left alone mm. that's when christ reveals himself in a vision and comes to speak to him yeah. i i i have experienced god in my own tribulation Amen. and mm. i i do think he still does today as mm. he did with john in in patmos yeah so like you you made it so clear that john is not the only one to experience god through yeah. tribulation and i think it's like our um, If you've gone through tribulation and you've been just anchoring yourself on Christ then you must have experienced mm. Christ. If not you're going to experience him, you know. Um so that means that God is not only experienced when you are happy. He's mm. always also experienced when you are going through tribulations. And just uh picking up from the part of tribulation, we go to the book of Acts chapter 14 verse 22. I don't know if Raphael you are there already. Acts chapter 14, 14. verse 22. Acts 14:22 give me a moment I'll be there. Okay. And uh Acts 14 verse 22 says mm -hmm. confirming the souls of the disciples and ex exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Yeah. Through much many tribulations enter into the kingdom of God. So Japheth, my uh, my question is must we go through tribulations to see Christ and why is it important that we go through all these tribulations 
uh, it appears, uh, thanks Romana, it appears um, almost like a marker of mm-hmm. Christianity mm-hmm. that uh, part of your experience must have uh, a moment of testing of your faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, this is Paul speaking in Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. This is, um, uh, 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 it is believed to be his very last epistle just before, unfortunately, he's executed by the emperor mm-hmm. reigning at that time, Nero. And he says, Yea, and all that we live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now you asked why? Why and is it necessary? Uh, uh, in the book First Peter, uh, Peter uh, speaking about tribulation, he says, First uh, Peter chapter one verse six, wherein ye greatly rejoice. So he's saying greatly rejoice in what? Mm-hmm. Though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold or many temptations. Why? And this is the reason why. Mm. He says, verse 7, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, Mm. might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Mm. So that even gold, Paul is is saying, uh, uh, does not increase and gain its value as much as a Christian Mm. who goes through trouble and is tried and is found to be um, not wanting, but to be found and to praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So trial has a way of strengthening our experiences Mm. with God, strengthening our relationship with God, making us closer. And even like I'm thinking, um, uh, uh, also removing from us the idols that are in our minds. You know, idols Mm -hmm. like material uh, things Mm -hmm. often come to us at points of prosperity Mm -hmm. and um, when you are uh, relaxing. Mm -hmm. But once those material things, those idols, uh, supposedly not really idols but things that could be idols Mm -hmm. are taken from you and then the only person that can be present um, in your mind and at the center would be God Mm -hmm. and so unfortunately even if yes trials are difficult and you should never uh, uh, um, like make light of something because Mm -hmm. trials are trials they're Mm -hmm. challenges Mm -hmm. but they do have a way of like focusing your experience on Mm -hmm. God and God alone Mm -hmm. so that everything else is put on the side and God becomes the center yeah so unfortunately, sometimes we do not view trials as that. So we feel like, why has God forsaken me? And we c- complain all through. <laughs> we do not have the same experience of just worshipping him through the trials. Why do you think it is? Why? Okay, talk to someone who's going through trials and they're feeling like God is not there. All they're doing all day is complain, not worshipping God. How can we move from a point of complaining to worshiping God so that we can be able to see Him clearly? Uh, okay, mm. that's a very important question. And um, what comes to mind is uh, the, the experience of Paul, mm. also borrowing from the experience that uh, Sister Jess has shared with us. In that, there's a time Paul uh, says that he had a thorn uh, in mm-hmm. his flesh, mm-hmm. something for which he had asked God over and over again to for victory. It. But eventually, when God speaks, it, he tells him uh, that whatever predicament, whatever the issue was in, in Paul's life, mm-hmm. he says uh, his grace is sufficient mm-hmm. to cover mm-hmm. for whatever deficiencies mm-hmm. that we may be asking to be helped um, overcome. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, in essence, it speaks to us and tells us that uh, God says his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Uh, it speaks to us to... Um, actually go to God in our weaknesses and uh, and ask God to help us in spite of these weaknesses and with these weaknesses mm. to wa- to walk with us and to work with us um one uh, another other christian uh, authors and uh, and thinkers uh, postulate and say that if there's one thing that God does not have it is weaknesses mm-hmm. and so our weaknesses are the windows through which God can get to our souls our weaknesses are 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 are, are like the chink in our armor through which the arrows of God's mercy, of, of him acting in our lives, uh, can be able to be seen. Mm. Because uh, as you say, sometimes as you see, for most of us, our weaknesses, are, are the problems that we struggle with are the same things that take us to the foot of the cross. Mm. They're the same things that, that, that take us to God. Because more often than not, when we're doing well, uh, sometimes we can be high and lifted up eh? mm-hmm. uh, and, 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 and moving like God uh, in, in, in the vision of Ezekiel. But uh, nonetheless, uh, in our weaknesses, uh, we feel, we, one, we are in tune with our need for God. Mm-hmm. We are in tune with his power. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. and uh, we are in tune also with our with our humanity our our our, our utter use, uselessness mm-hmm. in in face of um, in face of, um, of of certain issues in life and so uh, i would speak to us to give god our weaknesses i speak to us to trust god with our weaknesses trust mm-hmm. god with whatever deficiencies we may be having whatever powerlessness we may be having and he says his strength is made perfect in our weakness amen amen so and one thing we have underscored in lesson one or rather the Sunday part that Christ is a constant companion during the times of trouble. Amen. Like he's there. Mm-hmm. God is there with us and he will strengthen us. So if Amen. you're going through trouble, just know that you've already been strengthened and we've been saying that we have already overcome. So we move to the Monday part, worship the creator. And as we were preparing for this lesson, I had just saying that, Jafet, this is your favorite <laughs> topic, the topic of creation. So what is really the relationship between worship and creation? Because you're being told here, worship the creator. What is really the relationship between the two? So um, uh, ultimately, mm-hmm. and um, uh, the highest, um, you could say, like the title that is so great mm-hmm. is that the title of God as creator. Yes. Uh, oftentimes in uh, the Old Testament, mm-hmm. God says, you know, um, uh, all of those other idols, all the other gods of all the other nations, mm-hmm. them, they are created beings. So somebody takes something to create them, mm-hmm. but then God is the creator of the heaven and earth. In fact, there's a small like joke um, found in the book of Isaiah mm-hmm. where God is saying that a particular individual individual um, takes um, uh, a, a piece of wood and then he mm. cuts it into two. Mm. And then um, the first part, he turns he makes it into firewood. Mm. Then the second part, he fashions it into an mm. idol. Mm. Then he asks almost sarcastically, mm. maybe he turned God, the, the God into firewood and he's worshipping <laughs> uh, firewood. You know, So like the idea is what God is there, is the, the creator. creator. And this is why it is uh, so important um, uh, so much of note that in the book of Revelation chapter 14 verse 7 mm. uh, we find the connection very strong between worship mm. and, and creation. It says here, uh, worship him reading Revelation chapter 14 mm. verse 7 mm. saying with a loud voice, fear God, give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. Worship him that made heaven and earth and sea and the fountains of water. Mm. Sometimes we worship the things um, uh, uh, inadvertently by giving time mm. and energy and, and whatever to things that we think have given us uh, mm. blessings in life. Mm. You know, maybe you worship your job. Why? Because your job is a provider. It gives you mm. money. You know, worship not in that sense. You bow down, mm. but you give all your time, mm. all your 100%. energy, over hundred percent to mm. that thing. Mm. Sometimes you worship your family. Sometimes mm-hmm. you worship even even spouses. Sometimes, yeah. but then we are being told. God is the one who has created not just you, but even those small parts of yourself mm. that that if it would be impossible even to even look at, you know, atoms and things even smaller than atoms. Mm. God has created every single tree, every single liter of water that you're drinking mm. is God's creation. Mm. Every single uh, a, 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 a bit of metal that is being used to fashion buildings and whatever mm. and vehicles that you're in are creations of God. Mm. Every single tiny atom or whatever that is inside many of these electronics that you're being used for communication, all of them come from God. Mm-hmm. So in truth, the ultimate provider, the ultimate creator mm-hmm. is, is God, God himself. himself. So, so if there is anyone who, de- who deserve us giving all of our time, all mm-hmm. of our energy, mm-hmm. it's the one from whom we deserve everything. Uh, so deserve, um, we receive everything. We receive everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. from whom we have, um, has given us everything that we possess and everything okay. that we have. Thank you. Uh, Jess, I, I look at the Bible and the greatest contest that I've ever met happening in the Bible between the prophet of God and the children of Israel is that of Mount Carmel. You know, he the prophet tells the, the children that um, I'm going to set up two altars where one is going to be the God, the creator, then the other one is for your idols. And he makes another joke and when they are still praying, he tells them, pray, call your gods, let them bring what? Fire so that it can burn this. Um, it was what? It was a, it was an offering. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let, let, let the fire come and burn this offering. And in the calling and in the calling, he, he tells them, he, he becomes sarcastic and tell them that, has your God gone to sleep? <laughs> or is he taken a leave or something like that? And, and uh, you go to the, Ten Commandments, the first commandment tells you that you shall not have any other God before me. Mm. You know, and the second one is also an, an 
an emphasis of the first one, make no idols of things on earth or in heaven that are looking like me. You know, God is emphasizing on worship me, true God. And we've seen that even in this lesson where the Jewish children were taught there's only one God, worship him alone. Why do you think there is that insistence, persistence, insistence of God just insisting that his children must worship him? I think even firstly to even identify mm. who to worship yeah um like th the question is why would not I worship mm -hmm. my phone like who says it can't be a god mm. or why would not I worship like the question is like why why god you know mm. how do i identify god mm -hmm. as the true mm -hmm. god mm -hmm. if we say that we need to worship the true god mm. and creation is the is the is the one thing that sets him apart okay in the book in the book of exodus chapter 20 when we are being given the fourth commandment mm -hmm. that um that helps us identify who god is it mm -hmm. is the only part that says this is jehovah mm -hmm. the other commandments don't tell us who is god they mm -hmm. don't tell us um honor the i mean they don't when they tell us have or have me as the only true god mm -hmm. but the fourth commandment identifies him he says, I am Jehovah. But how does it say it? He says, the one who created the heavens, heavens and the earth. The earth. The, I, the, what identifies him mm -hmm. is his creation. Mm -hmm. When the book of Isaiah 46 asks, ask who, is, who is going to liken me mm. to anything mm. else? It's because mm. I am not made. Mm. It's because I am the creator. Mm. And if God is set apart by his creation, mm -hmm. it means that human beings cannot worship that which is created. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we, we all worship only to the creator. Mm -hmm. And the emphasis to now, therefore, render worship mm -hmm. back to the creator. Mm -hmm. It's because then... I mean, anything else that can be worshipped has been made. Has has uh, we can only worship that which has only in itself um, the, the highest, the, the highest power, mm. uh, uh, yeah, the highest power, as Raphael puts it, and and the only source of power, the mm -hmm. only source of life. Mm -hmm. All the other things have no source. They are they are given mm. life mm. if they are living, mm. and if they are not living, then they are created, mm. and 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 therefore the the. It is to turn back to the creator, mm -hmm. to turn back to a higher being, mm -hmm. to turn back to the one only who is owed that worship. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jesus has told us why we should worship the creator. But, and she puts it clearly that in, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And that is what sets God aside, apart. So I'm just going to ask, there is the revolution theory and in school we even learn how mountains are formed so we know the volcanic mountains the fold mountains how rivers are, are formed where is the place of science in this creation story as a christian as a student who is in school who's being taught the creation theory by Darwin, the creation theory by Darwin. And even our traditional African societies have an explanation of how the world came to be. How do we just reconcile all these theories and come and say, no, there is only one God who created the heavens and the earth? Mm. It's a deep question mm -hmm. um, and also an exciting question, mm -hmm. a question that perhaps uh, requires like three sessions of an <laughs> hour each, but uh, mm -hmm. we'll try and, um, and, 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 and answer it in short. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll refer to what just referred to in the book of Isaiah 46 verse 9 and 10, where God gives a challenge to the children of Israel who had always had the habit of being tempted to sleep mm -hmm. and to worship other gods, other gods. as other nations. Mm -hmm. And he tells them, and he, he, he in essence he says, if these other gods are truly gods, then let them tell you the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So from the word go, um, two things. We have the Ten Commandments and we have prophecy. Mm -hmm. So in the Ten Commandments, uh, you see, as, as Jess has also rightly, rightly, rightly said, it's, it's in the Fourth Commandment that the person who's giving all these things, mm. all these uh, Ten Commandments, actually identifies himself mm. and, uh, and his territory mm. and why mm. these commandments are important for mm. those who, who are under him. And so uh, it, uh, God identifies himself. You see, aside from the Fourth Commandment, uh, 
the Ten Commandments can apply to almost any religion mm-hmm. and to almost any God. Mm-hmm. Uh, even as you as you refer to African societies, we respect parents. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a uh, honor your elders and all mm-hmm. those things. Mm-hmm. There are ma- many other monotheistic religions that mm-hmm. say only one God. Mm-hmm. In fact, others go and go ahead and say he doesn't even have a son mm-hmm. and things like that. So, mm-hmm. but the fourth commandment is unique in that it God identifies Himself mm-hmm. as the Creator of heaven and, and of earth. earth. Mm-hmm. And this same God now in Isaiah 46 verse 9 and 10 speaks to us and tells us that if we consider Bible prophecy, Mm -hmm. that uh, what he says through the prophets, through his prophets, through his word comes to pass. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so through the instrument of prophecy, we can be able to, one, find the true God. Mm -hmm. And two, in finding this true God, he tells us that he is the creator of heaven of heaven and earth. Mm-hmm. And Revelation 14 uh, verse 7, uh, 6 to 7 uh, is calling us once again, the mm-hmm. first angel's message, to worship him who made the heavens and the earth. Mm-hmm. We live in a world in which uh, there are many uh, many ideas mm-hmm. of who God is. Mm-hmm. There are many theories. And I believe science is also something that was created by God. Mm-hmm. Genesis 1 and verse 1 actually speaks to speaks to us about the existence of time in our in our mm-hmm. in, in, in in our world it says in the beginning mm-hmm. it, it, it almost tells us that's when the if maybe this world is a is on a timer the stopwatch mm-hmm. was uh, was uh, he clicked start mm-hmm. and then who know god uh, god knows literally uh, when uh, when he will click stop mm-hmm. uh, so it speaks to us i believe science is an instrument through which god has given us mm-hmm. uh, to understand uh, the physical world mm-hmm. Just because they 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 credit uh, Newton with uh, with calculating gravity mm. does not mean that gravity had not had not been there since the days of Adam and Eve. Yeah, it yeah. Is, so science is just science simply mm. helps us interpret God God's the created world. It helps yeah. us to understand mm. the things of God. Mm. But science in a, in and of itself is not God. Mm-hmm. And so the uh, the problem that from as Japheth has also rightly inferred, I find uh, I find the, I find the session very 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 inspiring. Mm. Um, sometimes we worship the creature rather than the, the creator. creator. Sometimes we worship uh, our education mm. more than the God who has given us the minds to understand the and interpret things. these things. Mm. Sometimes we worship our positions and we, we've put all these things as idols before, before God. Mm. And so the first angel is calling us back to put first things first, mm. to God who is the highest. Mm. And, uh, and, and, so, and even evolution in and of itself is a faith. Nobody mm. was there mm. when there was a big bang, mm. you know? Same way, nobody was there when God said, "Let us create." Mm-hmm. Of course, uh, nobody in terms of uh, of of the of the of us as human beings, mm-hmm. but the angels were there and and they sang. Mm-hmm. The Bible tells us. And so, um, the question is, which one has a greater weight of evidence? Mm-hmm. And uh, for a fact, um, it makes sense. It makes sense um, not only from a scientific perspective, but also. Uh, beyond beyond uh, science, faith, uh, it calls us for, an, for some level of faith mm-hmm. because all of these things are faiths. Mm-hmm. Nobody was there when uh, when sudden nothing exploded into and the result is everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so science is simply a tool through which we understand God's creation. That mm-hmm. is how I, I understand science. Science facilitates us, mm-hmm. facilitates our praise mm-hmm. for God, mm-hmm. his power. His divine mind, mm-hmm. you know, his creation. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes when we when we think about heaven, so I think for some strange reason we we've, we've resigned ourselves that God likes music, mm-hmm. but God also likes creating and inventing. And so maybe even in heaven, fun beyond singing, we, we shall be inventing. fiddling <laughs> with the with 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 with, with science, you know, yeah, and. Yeah. Maybe we can uh, increase gravity to, to two times and then we see <laughs> what happens, you know. So uh, science helps us understand the mind of God. Yeah, mm. thank you. You you put it so rightly that science is helping us understand the creation of God. Is not to, we shouldn't worship it. We shouldn't make it like our God. Now we are using, it becomes like our point of reference. Our point of reference is still God. Amen. And so we've talked about our powerful God, uh, God that is able to create and we've made it so clear that God is the creator. Uh, I don't know how we, uh, you would feel like, you know, the way we, we give so much reverence to people who've invented things. You know, Sir Newton remains there all the time uh, for discovering gravity, you know. Um, if someone has discovered a river or a mountain, <laughs> we credit them all through. This person even gets and is put in the world uh, Guinness Book of World Records, you know, all those things. And we are we, from what I have understood is God is great, but 
we are going to choose the past and we are going to talk about a God who is close. So how can God be this big <laughs> and at the same time be close to us, Jess? I think um, there's, um, there's this belief of, I think, a group of people who call themselves the deists and I think we, they used to exist, who used to believe that God created the world and just left it um there um and to just exist on its own mm. and he's not concerned about this world mm. but we constantly see a god who condescends mm. who comes down mm. who, who comes so close to humanity mm. and dwells with them mm. and i think that's why you began the introduction with that part of of saying you know we take some things for granted mm -hmm. and i think god has come so close to us and has become so familiar with us mm -hmm. that sometimes we take it for granted that the creator and the one who is the source of all power mm -hmm. condescends and comes to our low level and understands us and walks closely mm -hmm. with us to the point where he says in the in the book of john chapter 15 that abide with me and mm -hmm. i knew that he wants to abide mm -hmm. you know in the book of john chapter 17 mm -hmm. um when christ is praying he prays and says god the way you are in me i want you to be in my disciples Amen. and i Amen. in them and Amen. to remain Amen. with them mm -hmm. and even when christ was departing from the face of the earth he knew the desire of his children to want to to, to want to be close to him to the point where he's telling them, you know, I have to go so that I can send you another comforter mm -hmm. so that you can experience this closeness mm -hmm. that, that, that and, and it can continue and you can experience comfort even if physically mm -hmm. you cannot see me. Mm -hmm. That in the presence of, in, in, with the Holy Spirit being with you, I am close with you. And I think that is also a mystery mm -hmm. you know there are religions um today mm -hmm. I, I i learned recently that um in islam when you pray you don't directly speak to allah you know you 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 don't directly relate with him and have that close relationship mm -hmm. but that's where the christian god becomes so amazing mm -hmm. that he's all powerful mm -hmm. a creator mm -hmm. yet such a personal god mm -hmm. and a personal friend mm -hmm. the bible says that we are the apple of his eye Amen. that our Amen. very names Amen. are written upon the palm of his hand he makes the relationship so close to imagine that the god who has all this power and has created has considered me and i think that's why um david will pause and say you know god who is man that you have considered them? Because David must have looked at God and seen this God who is mighty and high, the creator, and the power of creation is so great that today we have not honestly mastered and even understood all the things that God has created. Mm -hmm. We are still to discover more laws mm -hmm. in yeah, science, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and creation is not a law of science, a theory, mm -hmm. but we are still to discover even much, much more mm -hmm. of what God has done. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it still continues to astound us that such a God who will so much power comes close to mm -hmm. us as human beings mm -hmm. and, and abides with us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Um, Japheth, there is the immanence of God. Will you please take us through? Because it just tells us that, you know, this God is so big. He's done so much, so great things that we cannot comprehend. Like every day there's a new discovery, by the way. There's a new discovery. Yet he's so personal. Like the way he just has experienced God is not the same way you have experienced God. It's not the same way I have experienced God. Talk about the immanence of God. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so when you're th thinking about immanence of God, uh, this is normally one of the two uh, uh, seemingly contradictory uh, positions or views of who God is. Because there's a view that God is so great, mm -hmm. that God is so magnificent, that uh, uh, even uh, God bothering, as I just talked about uh, the days, God bothering with tiny, mm -hmm. tiny human beings in a mm -hmm. tiny planet uh, is so far beneath him. Mm -hmm. Then there's the other idea that God is so much inside all of his creation mm -hmm. that basically he is basically all of his creation. <laughs> um, and at that point now, God is indistinguishable from 
all of yeah. his creation. Mm-hmm. So now, one of the views is uh, uh, God's supreme transcendence. Mm-hmm. The other is God's supreme immanence. Mm-hmm. Now, the wonderful thing of the God of the Bible as revealed in the scriptures is that balance that is found. Mm-hmm. That it is v- very clear that God is overall. That he makes no qualms about the fact that he is the author of every single thing. Mm-hmm. He even mm-hmm. says that uh, in scriptures, there are parts where it, it, it's so strange. He says, that even I create evil. But that just means that he creates even bad things. So sometimes bad things can happen and God God himself has sent them. God sends the good things. Mm. We are told God sends the sunshine and the and the mm. rain. That God is the creator of heaven and earth mm. and the sea and the springs of water. Mm. There is nothing that is material in the scripture that God has not uh, uh, claimed rightly uh, as a part of his handiwork. Mm. But, so that's God's supreme transcendence. But uh, in God's supreme imminence, we find God present in our individual circumstances. Mm. There was uh, that really moving story of Jesus' individual uh, circumstance with God. Mm. I know I have my own, which maybe there are two, there are two uh, individuals that I cannot even relate in public, mm-hmm. but they are, they're right there also. I know that my brother Raphael has, I know Romana you have, mm-hmm. that every single one of us has that personal connection that we have with God. In um, Colossians chapter 1, verse 17, it says, He is be off before all things, and by Him all things consist. Mm-hmm. And again, when Paul was speaking, um, to all of those different um, uh, thinkers um, on Mars Hill um, in Acts chapter 17 verse 27 he says uh, that they should seek after God if happily they may feel after him and find him though he be not far from any every one of us mm-hmm. so the fact that God is close to us is something that is apparent as soon as you start seeking after God mm-hmm. you will find him right there mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's the wonderful beauty of it. That God, yes, he's supremely transcendent. He is greater than all. But he, because of that, he has the power. But mm-hmm. also he is immanent. That is, he is so close at hand. Mm-hmm. Exodus 25 verse 8, it says what? Let them make me a sanctuary that I might dwell, dwell among, among them. Name. And what mm-hmm. was Jesus Christ's name that Gabriel gave to uh, Mary? Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us. Mm-hmm. So uh, we should take heart. God, the supremely transcendent one, is immanent. He is right there with amen, us. Amen, amen. Thank you. Uh, Raphael, um, how does God's power and greatness give us comfort in our ev- everyday con- struggles in life? Mm. Mm. I, th- I think uh, maybe the analogy I would give is uh, maybe in a match. Mm. Uh, allow me to be a bit competitive. I know uh, spirit of competition may not really be a Christian spirit, but for the analogy sake, mm. um, in, if you're playing a football match or whatever match, all of us, if we identify that there is a there is a, a a wonderful and excellent player. We feel comfortable if this player is in our team. Mm-hmm. Similarly, with God, in God, and with God, we find one who not only is uh, eminent but also transcends. Mm-hmm. So we find one who is able uh, to do wonderful things, to do great things. But far and beyond that, he's also willing. You know, being able and being willing are two two different things. Sometimes you could find that uh, the politicians are able to change, to make decisions that will change the livelihoods of their constituents, but because of certain uh, interest groups or uh, interested parties, they make, uh, depending on their interest, they make certain choices. But with God, we find one who is not only mm-hmm. able, but one who is willing. Mm-hmm. And so it enables us to face, uh, to face, uh, to face our challenges knowing that God is with us. Mm-hmm. We are facing these challenges the same way, uh, the disciples are facing that storm with Christ, uh, in the, in the vessel. And yes. so we usually sing that song. If mm-hmm. Jesus is in the vessel, yes, can then smile. we can smile at, at the storm. storm. We can smile at the storm. Mm-hmm. And so it speaks to us of a God who comes close. It speaks to us to a God who who knows and is as uh, and uh, and is interested in our lives. Mm-hmm. In as much as He is maintaining, He has put in place many things. His government is 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 so wonderful and so and and so and so magnificent. Yet He finds time mm-hmm. to visit uh, a, a young a young woman who has been chased away by the name of Hagar mm-hmm. with a child who is in need, mm-hmm. and He tells them uh, when she's pregnant, he tells, he tells her as she's running away, he tells her to go back and uh, tells her to name the child mm-hmm. Ishmael, which means what? The God who hears. Mm. The God who hears. He could, he could look at uh, a, a lady who was not even a child, one of the children of Israel. Mm-hmm. Yeah? But he cared that much. He condescended and he spoke to her. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. uh, and, and 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 he gave her a message and and she went back and and she he said this child I will bless also mm-hmm. this child I will mm-hmm. bless may not be the child of the promise but this one also I will bless mm-hmm. and he will be a prosperous people speaks to us about a god who cares for us about a god who loves us about a god who is interested in our lives mm-hmm. and so it speaks to us to invite him and to have that um, uh, that experiential knowledge mm-hmm. and um, and indeed With Jesus in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. Amen. It makes me so happy to realize that, you know, despite God being this big person, like, you know, God, I'll, I'll, I'll look at God from the point of view of a governor of a county, a president of a country. But the difference is that God really cares. So he comes down to my state, you know, to your state, to everyone's state. And like Raphael puts it is that, God has so many things he's doing but even you with your smallest problem he comes and attends to it there's war in another big another country there's someone who used to pray and say that you know God I know you have children to feed <laughs> children are hungry there are kids others there are others that are suffering from various diseases that are terminal there are others that are at a point of death but I'm here with a very small problem please just look at it and God would answer him ha huh. so you know I'm so happy I'm so blessed to know that God is just he listens he cares about me that him being the big big God does not make him forget me the Amen. small small rumona Amen um, We move to the Wednesday part gospel judgment and creation and just I'd ask you know the evolution theory it as much as we have agreed that science should not be our god that it helps us understand uh, the creation of god the things god has created the physical aspect of the of his creation the evolution theory sparks doubt into the creation theory what is really wrong with us just trusting the creation the evolution theories vis-a-vis the creation that we know has been spoken about in the word of god i think when you think of evolution that teaches that we have been created of a mill uh, or rather we have not created we have evolved <laughs> over that's how much i love the creation story <laughs> that i even call it okay mm-hmm. but that we have evolved over millions of years mm-hmm. and that we were small atoms mm. um that grew and became cells mm. and or amoeba or something or may not be very accurate so if you believe in the evolution and I've not used the right words please have mercy on me <laughs> um but and then we we were at some point um um monkeys and then we we just evolved into creatures mm. it it ends up asking a lot of questions then where was adam and eve and is there original sin mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and if there is no at what point did adam and eve evolve they start living and then there's um original sin then the question also becomes then how did even sin come into the world mm-hmm. and then the other question that will come up easily is then how why would even jesus have to come and, and die. die because if mm. with, without adam and eve and mm. the original sin in mm. the garden of eden mm. then there is no point of christ mm-hmm. to come and mm-hmm. die because what sin is he dying mm. is he dying is he dying for mm. you, and and that's why it, it is so dangerous when you start um holding on to the evolution theory because mm-hmm. you end up um casting doubt into what is the point of christ and 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 who is christ and then you also ask ask questions what right does christ have mm. to even come and die if mm. he's not the one who created us mm-hmm. who is he then mm. you know and and those are those are some of the fundamental questions mm. you start seeing that evolution theory destroys the foundation truth mm-hmm. of of christianity Amen. that that, that even before the beginning of the beginning of the world god knew about the creation of man it was in his mind and he knew if man were to sin i will send a savior mm-hmm. and if i'll send a savior then they will believe in the savior and they will be saved but once you introduce evolution mm-hmm. then you you wonder where is the place of god where is the place of a savior where is the place of the cross mm. in in all that mm. and and i think that's when it becomes dangerous mm. it tears down the foundation yeah. of christianity and you put it so rightly that it actually mocks the death of 
Christ mm. on the cross. Mm. Why would Christ die if people just came up, you know? I think you you <laughs> might just say he's having fun because there was no yeah. point of him dying. People have just been evolving and, yeah, and slowly. Very sad. Exactly. <laughs> And that's I, true. I think that's that's a very interesting way of seeing it because I've never seen seen the evolution theory. Okay, I don't even believe in it. She just did it for school, but it is actually a very dangerous concept mm. to even start believing in it. And Jeffet, I'll ask the first angel's message in the book of Revelation, chapter fourteen. Um, it's uh, Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, I believe. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment and has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and spring of water. This is The angel is just emphasizing on the fourth commandment is just emphasizing on the first um the first verse of the bible genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning god did what created the heavens and the earth and he's adding in the aspect of worship so what role does the first angel's message play in the context of worshiping the creator so the first angel's message mm. uh, uh, uh it it places worshiping the creator on the center stage yes. because it places it at a point where mm. this is crucial mm. to that final um, a, 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 a issue, the final controversy, the final issue that is at stake here, mm. that um, we are talking about uh, a fearing God, mm. which we discussed in the previous uh, lessons mm. as having to do with obedience, mm. right? Mm. And giving him glory, which had to do with, with how we'd manifest um, a, a, a righteous works, etc., etc., etc. And then all those things are being placed at the center stage in connection mm. with worshiping the creator. Amen. And so the fact of God's creation is actually something that if you deny it, mm -hmm. then you deny even the essence of worship, mm -hmm. as Jess was saying. Mm -hmm. And in fact, like um, another issue I was thinking about right now is if you would say that, let's say, uh, a, a God did not create specifically, as he said in the book of Genesis mm -hmm. chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, mm -hmm. then why should we take um, anything else in the scriptures Serious. Seriously, because mm. why can't we say all the, um, everything else is metaphorical mm. or, a, or or is, is a spiritual lesson mm. with no specific immediate mm. concrete uh, lesson? Mm. And that is the beauty of um, uh, the first angel's message because it puts it front and center. It says this issue mm. is a special issue which is at stake in this, in this mm. present time. And that's something we can see today. Um, the, the idea that, um, that um, evolution is being pushed as uh, the main idea of, 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 of how everything came to be mm. versus God's creation is actually a key issue presently, mm. even right now. Mm. And uh, the fact that God had made this um, an essential part of the first angel's message mm. is like, I feel it's almost another sign of God having seen the end from the beginning, that he knew that, that at this point in earth's history, mm. uh, people will be struggling with this issue. Mm. Therefore, more than anything else, this mm. is very important. Mm. Worship, not the one who worked through evolution, mm. but the creator. Amen, amen. Because every day you hear us, uh, ships have been launched to, into space to try and find if there's an extra earth where human beings can yeah. go <laughs> and live. And I always wonder, so if you find it, what happens? <laughs> so let me ask you, Raphael, we've, we've really delved about, Jess has rightly told us that if we believe in the creation, the evolution theory, then Christ, there was no need for Christ to come and die. Mm -hmm. And Japheth has rightly told us that um, the creation story places God at the center of worship. Mm -hmm. We are rightly worshiping God. And now my question to you will be, how is the message of God as a creator related to the message of Jesus as a redeemer? Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. <clears throat> I think uh, as my fellow panelists have, uh, have rightly said, evolution in essence uh, negates the necessity mm -hmm. of a savior mm -hmm. because it removes the sin question exactly. in totality. Yeah. Because one, it claims that life is in and of itself intrinsically an accident. Mm -hmm. And so why then, if this whole thing is an accident, why then set rules? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, then there are those who've tried, as Jaffet has said, who've tried to sort of marry these two. Mm -hmm. And so they introduce theistic evolution where they say that the timelines in Genesis 1 and ch chapter 1 and chapter 2 are actually... Uh, 
uh, they sort of uh, they they sort of like prophetic, eh? like one day is a thousand years, yeah. mm. something like that. So they 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 make them metaphorical, and so they say it is God who created, yes, but He created through the instrument of mm. evolution, mm. which still also um, um, negates the whole thing because, as we see, uh, the whole premise of evolution is that. Uh, where we are becoming better and better mm-hmm. we're becoming refined and fine yet the message of the bible is that the times are evil and 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 mankind is becoming worse yeah. and worse and all waxing creation groaning. yes mm-hmm. all creation is groaning mm-hmm. and in fact the scripture tells us that since after sin man is man has is degrading, degrading. Yeah. indeed man is yeah. not becoming better mm-hmm. um and uh, we also uh, there's the obvious lack of uh, in between people hybrids uh, perhaps you should be able to see people who are still in the process of uh, evolution mm-hmm. but we have distinct groups we have monkeys and even in monkeys we have different classes then we have various races of 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 of, of men and so um evolution in and of itself uh, negates the necessity of 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 god mm-hmm. whereas the biblical story of creation mm-hmm. that is not only backed up by science but also w- which we understand by faith mm-hmm. speaks to us about a father a loving crea- creator who loved us and who thought about us to the extent that we um we are told Christ is called the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world mm-hmm. we are told us just as referred to us as as has 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 as reminded us that god when he was creating man christ had put his life as the insurance by which creation was done mm-hmm. and thus he is called the lamb slain from the foundation of the world mm-hmm. because christ said if these whom we are creating fall then i will come and i will redeem them mm-hmm. therefore we are gods twice not only by creation but also by redemption Amen. so we are doubly we doubly belong to god and and in fact god uh, god deserves double the worship Imagine. double the worship mm-hmm. and so uh, when 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 the final issues uh, of the, of this earth's final hours are, are are being brought to the uh, to the prominence in fact the first angel's message is the only is the only message that uh, is god's last message mm-hmm. the second and the third angels are just they're just giving warnings and other things mm-hmm. the message in essence the core of the message is worship god amen. why because amen. he is the creator amen. of heaven amen. and the earth amen. 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 Yeah, um, 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 this lesson is just becoming interesting and deep and i'm having like so many things are coming out clearer and i hope even us that are falling from home it's becoming clearer every other step so we move to the thursday but the creator on the cross you know when we start we we were about to start this lesson someone took a screenshot of a, a, a photo of this message of this lesson this particular one um the creator on the cross and the lesson writer tells, speaks from the book of genesis chapter 1 verse 26 let us make man in our own image according to our likeness and then he moves to the book of matthew chapter 27 verse 46 Eli Eli lama sabakitani my god my god why have you forsaken me and the lesson writer continues to say that the same god who created the heavens and the earth is the same is the one who was on the cross so the person who took the photo was claiming that god was crucified on the cross please help us understand who was on the cross it it i think it's one of those things we take for granted but let's just line who who was on the cross indeed i think the person was right mm-hmm. god was on the cross mm-hmm. the creator was on the cross you see the work of redemption mm-hmm. it is indeed a work of creation mm-hmm. so only one with the, the power to create has the power to save in the book of um isaiah i think ch- chapter 45 verse 20 God says this these ones are created and they cannot save you mm-hmm. because they are created such that the the one who is created has no power to save mm-hmm. and if you read the language used when when describing um when describing redemption mm-hmm. it is the same language used to describe creation the bible says when 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 david is praying he says um um god creates in, in me, me a clean <laughs> heart we are told that those who have been redeemed um in in by Christ they are new creatures it's a new work of creation we actually told in the book of ephesians we are a workmanship you know mm. created by god mm. you, and because once we on if only god can 
can actually redeem, can actually save. Mm. He's the only one who has the power to be on that cross mm. to save us. The mm. only one. You know, it is very interesting when he was speaking, I just realized that the very, the creation and, and redemption are so closely related yeah. that I find that the same sign God uses for, for creation mm. is the same sign God uses for um, salvation and mm. redemption. Mm. In the book of Genesis, um, God says, you know, um, keep the Sabbath day holy. For in it, mm. I, I, I worked six days and on the seventh I rested so that you may remember my work of creation. Mm. And, 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 and later on, he writes and says, keep the Sabbath day for it is a sign for you to remember that I am the one who sanctifies mm -hmm. you. The same sign completely because the work of creation is the same work of redemption. redemption. It is Amen. the same Amen. power mm -hmm. that is working. Mm -hmm. And therefore it is only fit to see God who is the creator. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 1 that God who in sundry times spoke to us through the prophets has mm -hmm. in these last days mm -hmm. spoken to us through his son whom he used to do what? Create mm -hmm. the world. The world. Amen. So it, if Christ is the one who hung up on that cross, mm -hmm. it is indeed the one who created Amen. And, Amen. and he's the only one with the power mm -hmm. to okay. save his cre own creation. Amen. Amen. Now it makes so, sen so much sense why we need to worship him because he not only created us, but when we were lost, he came and redeemed us. Last time Raphael was calling this a holy uh, meeting between mm. the father and the son, just talking about how we're going to do what mm. redeem these children. Mm. Jafet, what are your thoughts on the, cro the creator on the cross? I think uh, for me, the fact that the creator is mm. the one who is redeeming us, mm. uh, like it's it's it has that personal element that this same being who knows everything about you mm. who understands because he created and 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 he he has that ca capacity obviously to understand exactly how we would interact with each particular challenge that we would handle in life mm. because he's the one who created even all those things mm. unfortunately which can be blessings or can be curses mm. you know mm. uh, and god gave us appetite but appetite can be mm. can be broken but god understands not just even biologically every single organ and how it works mm. but even psychologically how mm. um, our mind works and even more importantly he himself inhabited this very body mm -hmm. and because of all these things and this this is a, a wonderful theme that I think we have been focusing on consistently throughout um, um, every single session we've been discussing mm. for this whole lesson. The fact that Christ has been uh, uh, the one who took upon himself our mm -hmm. nature in totality mm -hmm. enables us to come boldly to him. Mm -hmm that we may come before him and, and present all our pleas mm -hmm. and, and ask God uh, uh, plainly for, 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 for any help in time of need and he will surely answer. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He's always present in the time of need. Amen. Uh, Raphael, uh, we've been talking about Christ on the cross, the creator on the cross, and there are two thieves that hung with Jesus, one on the right and the other one on the left. And one of them told him, are you not the one who was able to heal. Why are you not saving yourself? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. by now, save yourself, save us too. Get us get us out of this mess. Then the, this other one that humbles himself and is like, are you not seeing that you deserve the death that you're going through? This man is really innocent. And in all that, we just see Christ humbling himself to the death of the cross, a very shameless death, shameful death. <laughs> How how does that death of Christ on the cross just should deepen our worship and gratitude towards the Creator? Mm. I think the cross does a number of things. Mm. Uh, the cross, in and of itself, was a was a was 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 a spectacle even to the angels, mm. because I think on the cross um, that is when I think all the angels saw uh, the mystery of iniquity. Mm. Uh, we saw they saw when the creature tried to kill the creator. Mm. I think from there, I think even uh, mm -hmm. the character of, of mm -hmm. Satan was mm -hmm. fully manifested mm -hmm. to all the unfallen worlds mm -hmm. and the universe mm -hmm. at large mm -hmm. because they saw, given a chance, the devil wanted to kill God. Yes. Um, the second thing that it does, it, it does for us, it tells us of the immutability of God's law mm. because Christ hung there on the cross because to prove that uh, God's law can both be just and merciful. Amen. He he on the cross there is bearing 
the penalty he he bears he bears uh, he he bears the the sins of this world as John uh, tells us in John 3 and verse 16 for God so loved the world mm-hmm. that he gave his only begotten son mm-hmm. but then this son himself says uh, i give my life i lay it down myself nobody forces me mm-hmm. philippians is, he speaks against and tells us uh, paul says let this mind be in you mm-hmm. and uh, we he did not think of he did not think it uh, um, any mm-hmm. robbery mm-hmm. to be equal to god but he just humbles himself and dies when the, the that that condescending death on mm-hmm. the cross and beyond that we see the creator also simply once again redeeming even on the cross mm-hmm. when uh, it, it sort of shows us the choice that we have as as human beings uh we have a choice to choose whether we are going to be the thief who was penitent and thus granted entrance mm-hmm. uh when the trumpet of the lord shall sound he shall resurrect mm-hmm. and he shall he, he shall get to heaven or shall we still be obstinate and and had headed as this other one and still mock the grace of god and his mercies mm. and so the cross in essence um, is an opportunity to us the cross is um, is a portrayal of god's character and and of, and, and of the importance of his law uh, to the extent that he went all the way to the cross mm. he didn't cut corners he tells us he is he is one whose character is holy and, and 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 the requirements of his law must be met fully and perfectly but whereas we cannot where we where we fall short of it the same cross speaks to us about his mercy his hand of mercy extended to us covering us and helping to fill the gap to bridge the void that uh, that sin creates that separation of of man and god and so the cross speaks to us of a a cre- a, a, cre- a, cre- a, a creator who loves us i think it's in fact even uh, the mystery of of godliness the mystery of godliness that god became man he walked amongst us and uh, he was subject to his own laws mm-hmm. and 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 he didn't he didn't cut corners mm-hmm. we live in a world in which um, uh, as you've seen in this country i don't know whether it happens in developed countries but in most african countries if a, if an important person is passing sometimes they even drive on the wrong side <laughs> yeah. but god <laughs> kept on the right side yes. he kept he observed the traffic no, rules observed he observed everything mm-hmm. yet this was the creator yeah. and he he did it all the way to the when he dies on the cross yeah. And so it tells us about uh, God's law and how it is related to his character. Amen. And it also tells us uh, that where we fall short he bridges the gap Amen. and uh, he is both merciful. So he's ours he's he's our God by creation and he's our God also by redemption. Amen. 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 This has been a wonderful discussion, you know. Uh, it's been really deep. It's, it it has helped us understand why we are worshiping the creator uh we have come to the end of the lesson and just before we really really close let's just give us a one second each and just give our final remarks starting with jess i think the lesson um today spoke of um christ being on the cross and saying my god my god why has thou forsaken me and him being the creator and being able to feel the agony to that extent and mm-hmm. the pain to that extent mm-hmm. a writer in the book um Ellen White in the book Desire of Ages writes and says that even Christ longed for human companionship mm-hmm. and you can imagine this is the creator himself mm-hmm. yet he's the one who wants to come close mm-hmm. and and know you and and abide with you and attend to you i think behold him as your god um you will only find a loving one amen 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 yes yes so for me uh, just the fact that the creator of the cosmos the ruler of all that is mm. is the very one who died on the cross for us and mm. is uh, ever present to listen to our pleas ever present to be there for us uh and ever present to hear our prayers to forgive us and to give us grace and guidance every single day amen amen yes I think um uh what I get from this lesson is um mm. just to echo uh what Jess has uh, uh has uh, has Adalia said in the book of Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 12 uh God says hello my sabbaths mm. uh for they sh- signify that I am the Lord who does what who sanctifies them is a god who saves us is a god who justifies us is a god who 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 forgives our sins who who fills that void The reason why Christ cried Eloi Eloi lama sabachthani mm. my lord my lord my god my god why have you forsaken me mm. is that sin creates that gap mm-hmm. between us and god mm. yet we are told that, that in that darkness that uh, that, cap- that 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 covered that hill god was there mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. God was present. Mm-hmm. And so the cross tells us of, uh, of, 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 of the pain and agony that we suffer as a result of separation from God, as a result of sin. But it also, it, op- it also opens a doorway for us to reconnect with God. And, 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 and um, a mark of our salvation and of our creation that God has given to each and every single one of us is his Sabbath. Mm-hmm. And so uh, in this last day, uh, in the call to worship in Revelation, we are, we, the Sabbath is being given preeminence mm-hmm. and, 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 and it is an important thing. It is, it, we are going to see eventually it is even a mark of, of God's people, uh, that it, it shows that it is God who not only created the heaven and the earth because we rest on the Sabbath because it was the seventh day mm-hmm. in which God rested from all his works. Mm-hmm. And then in Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 12, it speaks to us that it is a mark that it, it is God who does what? Who saves us, mm-hmm. who sanctifies us. Mm-hmm. He repeats it again in, in verse 20 of the same uh, Ezekiel. It says uh, it, it shows his mark of creation. And so uh, it simply calls to us about the importance of the Sabbath and the importance of the worship question in these last day events. May we perhaps introspect and ask ourselves mm-hmm. um, in our worship, uh, do we reflect, uh, mm-hmm. do we show to the world who created the heavens and the earth? Do we show to the world who has redeemed us? And so it calls to us uh, to think about these questions. Thank you. Thank Amen. you so much for just leading us in this discussion. My closing remarks will be, Rejoice, O child of God, because the creator of heaven and earth has the power to redeem us. So if you have been struggling with this worship or who are you worshiping, we have learned today that we are worshiping the God who created the heavens and the earth and the God who still hung on the cross and saved us from our sins. Next, uh, next week, we'll study about the Sabbath at the end. And Raphael has preempted some of the things that we are going to <laughs> learn, but it is okay. So, yes, please join us again next Sabbath as we go through the Sabbath and the end. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll ask that Raphael closes for us with our of prayer. Uh, let's believe and pray. Mm-hmm. Our kind and loving Father and Master, what in heaven we humbly come before you this blessed day. We are thankful, O Lord, for the wonderful time that you've acquired us to consider scripture and to study your word together, dear Lord. And thank you for the insights that you have uh, uh, touched our minds with. And I pray, dear Lord, that uh, these insights may find a place in the hearts of our believers and, and in our own hearts and in our experience, dear Lord. In a world where many voices claim to be divine, in a world where many theories claim to explain that which we do not see, dear Lord, you stand out amongst them high and lifted up. Our God, not only by creation, but even after creating us, dear Lord, you interact with us in so much that even when man fell, dear Lord, you instituted the divine uh, plan of our redemption and saw it to the to the to its end, dear Lord, and even on the cross. And beyond that, uh, Hebrews tells us that you are standing um, on the right hand of the throne of God, making intercession for us. Oh, what a wonderful Savior! What a wonderful friend that condescends not only creates but also condescends and isn't interested in our activities and so i ask dear lord in this particular day that you may behold each and every single one of us where we have needs dear lord once again come down and meet us and above all else uh, help us to erect true sanctuaries help us to erect um, and to stand for true worship in a world full of noise make this our experience and uh, be with us until we shall meet again our prayer in jesus name amen amen, amen.